our foster care system is shattered. And this podcast is about how we as a community can come together to bring about change, change in the system and changing the lives of children in foster care. Hi, my name is Rob Shear. I'm the founder of a national charity called Comfort Cases. I'm an advocate for children in foster care. I'm a public speaker. I'm an author of A Forever Family, but most important, I'm a dad to five of the most amazing kids. Welcome to the Fostering Change Podcast. This is part two of my friend Bob, who is the CEO and founder of Saks Cloth and Ashes. Please, as I said earlier, visit his website and see the unbelievable things that he is doing. Bob, I cannot thank you for coming back. And, you know, I want to remind everybody, if you did not catch the first episode, which I hope you did, um, we talked about Bob's journey and especially what made him decide to go and purchase that sewing machine and start Saks Cloth and Ashes. You know, we learned a lot about his mom um, and we learned the fact that Instagram has their own account. If you do not know that, I'm going to go follow it right after this show. But the thing that I, I learned, Bob, is the fact that you're really passionate about this. You are really passionate about this. You know, I think that what you're doing, I, I have the saying, be a good human. You've seen me with the shirts. When I came out to visit you with my son, we I might be a good human shirt. You truly are a good human. I mean, you could have easily taken this company and not think about how you wrap America with these blankets, people who are experiencing homelessness, but you've gone some other ways as well. And I just want to talk a little bit because maybe you don't get upset. I'm going to throw some of these stories out that you and I shared over the years. I follow you, as I said, on Instagram and Facebook, everywhere you're at, I follow you. LinkedIn, I love, I love following you on LinkedIn. But I, I noticed that in the last year, and we are in a pandemic, and by the way, for those of you just... T- We've been tested, we've been vaccinated, we're doing well on this, so please don't send me those. Put on a mask email. Um, We're in a small little room, just us, but it has got air ventilation. But anyway, get to back to during this pandemic, I've noticed um, some of your ads with um, our brothers and sisters who are Native American. And it seems like you have built a partnership. And I'd like to tell me about that because I find that unbelievable because those, those people are truly our forefathers, and I think they've been neglected for way too many years, and I can get on my soapbox about that part, but tell me what, how was that connection happen? Yeah, so we, for many, many years, we sold blankets that were Native inspired designs, and, you know, I've always been inspired by the Native community, just in, in general, growing up. I grew up in Coos Bay, Oregon, um, and there's a little coastal town in Oregon, and there's a huge history of Native Americans in that particular area where I grew up, the Coos Indian tribe. And so I've always been fascinated by um, Native culture and and I just think it's beautiful, you know. Um, and so we sold Native inspired designs for, for about four years. And um, I don't know what exactly was the moment that I was prompted to just be like, I'm going to form strong alliances with Native artists and native leaders over the next few years. And I, I didn't, I don't remember what that was, but I just went full in. Like I told a couple people that I work closely with and I'm like, who do we know that is uh, native American that I could meet with and learn from. And so one of the people that I got connected with was Lehigh Thunder Boy Siegel. And he's in Long Beach from Navajo Nation. And uh, I had coffee with them and, and I was like, hey, would you be open? He's an artist. Would you be open to designing a blanket collection for us? And he said, yeah, I'd be open to it. But what if I told you that the designs that you're already selling right now were offensive to the native community? And I said, well, then in that sense, I, I, would, I would clean house. I would get rid of all of our, our designs that are native inspired. And at the time, there are about eight of, eight of 10 of our best selling blankets. And so I'll clean house. Um, and he, in a really appreciative, he took many, many months to provide a lot of training around language, history, um, art, and allowed me to transition those designs out of our company. And then once that happened, 
I came out with a letter and apologized to the Native community for using Native inspired designs and um, backtracked all sales and are donating 5% of all past sales of every blanket that I ever sold that was Native inspired to Native NGOs. And then in addition to that, um, really, I sat down and did an interview with Thunder Voice and really discussed what cultural appropriation is. Cultural appropriation, I didn't, even though I didn't know I was culturally appropriating necessarily, uh, because I didn't steal those designs from a particular tribe. I wasn't, you know, intentionally infringing on copyright or, you know, tr trademarks. Um, but what it was is cultural inspired designs, even though you might not be intentionally doing something, you could be keeping opportunity from native artists that have similar designs. Mm -hmm. And so really looking at it full scope, I, I thought it was appropriate to make the, the move of transitioning completely away from native inspired designs and working with native artists from this point on and to remove all questions on my intentions from that point on any native partnership that we have from now into the future of this company, we donate a hundred percent of the profits from all sales to native nonprofits. Wow. And that so, is unbelievable. So, yeah. so, so for instance, if I go to, to sexclothandashes.com and I buy one of your blankets, um, because you're also making masks now too. It, no, he's, it, make, he's, he's making, he's making the mask because the, the masks are gorgeous, by the way, everybody. Yeah. I, I definitely, like I said, if you haven't followed, um, sackcloth and ashes on all their social media platforms, you really need to yeah, do it because it, whoever your photographer is, my friend yeah. is amazing um because there's some amazing shots so but if i go my question sorry to cut you off if i go and i buy one of the blankets a hundred percent of that blanket that i bought is going to one of the communities the the reservations um from one of the native americans yeah so the heritage collection which is what thunder voice created a hundred percent of the profits are donated to sovereign bodies which is an incredible organization that's collecting data and research on murdered and missing women in the native community and they take that information and implement it in specific ways um we have a, another native artist that we're partnering with here coming up um she is absolutely incredible also from navajo nation and um her name's naomi and uh i'm really excited to launch that partnership that's that's going to be launched in around july august of, of 2021 and she's one of the most incredible people that i've talked to i'm excited to interview her and she's selecting a native NGO that's to be determined on where her proceeds will go to. But I wanna ultimately use my platform as a convener to elevate native artists that, um, uh, that are doing incredible work and want to do incredible work in the world until they have entirely self-sustaining businesses where they don't need our platform at all. And, and uh, so it's an honor to even just get to be partnered with some native artists, but. Um, I'm on a learning journey with that as well. Like by no means am I an expert and I still say a lot of the wrong things and um, I should I should probably be canceled. <laughs> um, well, let me tell you, I, I totally get the part of not saying yeah. I mean, we we all are evolving. Um, and, and I know like when, when I got into the foster care arena, I used to call them foster kids. And, and, um, and then the more I, I talked to kids who are in the system, um, the more I realized how offensive that was. Mm -hmm. You know, I was, I was just watching the, the news last night, reading some articles and they were talking about Cherokee is making the decision to change the Jeep name. He, they're actually going to have the dialogue. And I sat there for a m moment, Bob, and I thought to myself, how is that offensive? You know, it's, you know, Cherokee Jeep has been around forever. How's it? But then I started thinking about if I was sitting in that Native American shoes, you know, if I was sitting in their shoes, I, you know, I could see now that for so many years, we have really made so much money on the backs of our Native brothers and sisters, you know. 100%. And, and maybe not just made money, but also kept opportunity. And that was my big, that, that was my big discovery in this learning process was it wasn't that I was making money off of Native communities. It was that I was keeping a potential opportunity from yeah. the Native community. And so for me, that was just a, one small step in the right direction of me just saying, like, look, I'm I'm actively wanting to learn and participate and help in any way that I can to build as many bridges as I can, because we have to be displaying partnership with people that are different than us 
that might have different beliefs, different religious beliefs, different political beliefs. And we have to start forming partnerships with people and advocating for things that are right. And um, instead of fighting to be right, we need to fight for what is right. And there's a huge difference. And so for me, I'm like, I want to build bridges with people that I can learn from that are completely different than me and that are very uncomfortable for me to be around because of how different I am potentially from them and how far behind I am in understanding and learning what I should already know. Wow. And that's a really humbling place to be. And it's a hard place to be. It was a very, it's been a painful process to understand and learn all of the ways that I have come short in my partnership with native brothers and sisters that I am throwing myself in over and over again to make sure that I'm progressing and evolving in the ability to best support, help and understand um, moving forward. And so that's the goal with, with that. And um, that's amazing. Yeah. That's absolutely amazing. I told all of you that this was going to be some unbelievable talking. You know, I think it's really important that we all get educated about this because, you know, I had made a couple of comments about, you know, making money, but really, I think Bob told us exactly what it is. It's not allowing them the opportunity the opportunity by taking the opportunity of, you know, making those blankets. And, and I love the fact that, you know, here you have this amazing collection, which by the way, um, um, I'm, I'm going to probably do a Facebook live later on this evening when Bob comes to the farm and gets to see the kids. They're so excited to see Bob again. They love Bob to death. Um, but in our home, I have a couple of these blankets in the collection. And I, I didn't know until today that 100% of those blankets went to um, nonprofits um, for our Native American brothers and sisters. Listen, everyone, we're going to take a quick break here. Um, again, I am so excited that my friend Bob um, Dalton from the founder and CEO CEO of Sax Cloth and Ashes has joined us today. Remember, go back, listen to part one so you can get caught up and do me a big favor. Listen to this sponsor because by listening to this sponsor and supporting this sponsor, we're able to continue to do this, have conversations. And hey, do me a favor, share. Share it, share it, share it. That's what I always say. Um, you can listen to us on all the platforms and hoping you are. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And again, we'll be right back. This episode of Fostering Change is sponsored by Comfort Cases, a national nonprofit that is inspiring our communities to bring dignity and hope to youth in foster care. You know, for just $10 a month, you can support the Comfort Cases mission to eliminate trash bags from the foster care system. For every $10 donated, a Comfort XL duffel bag will be given to a child entering foster care. Please help us be part of the change. Go to comfortcases.org and see how you can help a child entering our foster care system. I am so excited that we're still here with my friend, Bob, who is the CEO and founder of Sax Cloth and Ashes. Um, we have heard some amazing stories and the, what you do, Bob, is unbelievable. And I remember when you and I met, you started talking to me about a kid's book that you wanted to do. Um, I remember as you and I were sitting on my farm and you were telling my son, Tristan, um, and the other kids and my husband about this children's book. And I was like, oh my gosh, I want to be a part of this. This is so unbelievable. And then you shared the book with me and through an email and I was literally in tears. And, and you know, guys, you've heard me talk about this. You follow me and our charity comfort cases. You, you hear me talk quite a bit about everyone as someone. And I have to really quick tell you a quick story because I haven't seen you um, since the fall of last year. But um, there's a little elementary school in my little town of Darnstown, Maryland. My kids have all gone there. It's a population of about 298 kids. So we're talking a really small elementary school. And the second grade teacher, Mrs. Genevieve LeClaire, she is one of the best teachers I have ever met in my life. And I've met some amazing teachers and all of you are great, but Miss LeClaire is beyond what you can imagine. She's taught 
two of my kids, my son Tristan and my son Grayson, um, and she has become a friend of ours. And one day she called me up and she said, hey, she said, would you do me a big favor? And I said, what's that? She's like, do you think you could read a bedtime story to my second graders? And I said, oh my God, I love that. You know, we're in the pandemic, kids are not going to school, they're Zooming. And I said, sure. I said, you know what, why don't you pick the book um, and let me know what it is, and I will I will get the book and I'll read it. I you know it was it was in the the winter time, so I had the fireplace going. My son Tristan was standing next to me. She calls me up and she says, "I found the book." I said, "What's that?" She says, "Everyone is someone." I said, "What?" <laughs> she said, "I said you do know about this book." She's like, "No, what are you talking about?" She's like, "I just heard about it." She's like, "I was like, my friend wrote this book." <laughs> And she's like, what? And I was like, my friend actually wrote this book. Oh. I was like, I was like, Tristan flew to California to be a part of your media when it came to this book. So it was so full circle. But then hold on, wait, everybody. You got it. You can't even believe this. Bob, you are such an amazing human. He then sent a signed copy to all the students and the teacher. I I love you to the moon and back. Because let me tell you. When those second graders, after reading this book, heard me say, guess what? Each one of you are going to get a signed copy. The screams were priceless, were priceless. So tell me, what made you decide to write Everyone as Someone? Yeah, so uh, it started when the one thing I want to master in my lifetime is communication. And I'm just fascinated by all the different mediums of communication, whether it's speaking on stages or writing or whatever it is. And uh, I shared that with my friend and he was like, well, if you want to master communication, you have to write a children's book. And I was like, okay, I take on that challenge. And, and so it took me like multiple years. I just knew I was one day I'm going to try to write a kid's book. And then randomly one night I woke up at 3 AM and like subconsciously thought no matter how big, no matter how small, everyone is someone we need to love all. And it was this like this really weird moment where I was like half asleep, half awake. And I remember like, oh, I got to write that down. And I rolled over and I grabbed my phone and I like wrote it down. And then I just wrote the rest of it. And it was just a stream of thought. And then I woke up a couple hours later, went back to bed, woke up a couple hours later, looked at it, looked at it. And I was like, wow, like this is a little like mini poem. I wonder what medium I should share this message. And I was like, oh, I think this might be a kid's book. So I called a friend. Hey, I think I wrote a kid's book um, last night. <laughs> and then I was like, do you know of any illustrators? She's like, yes, I know this guy in Scotland. His name's Richie Collins, amazing painter. It's worth calling him. And so I get a hold of him, share the share about the book. He goes, I'll do it. I'll, I'm gonna, I'll paint every single page in this book. And so over eight months, he hand painted every single page of this entire book. Wow. And I've never even met the guy in person. Yeah. So, so, so I, that is, first of all, that is unbelievable. <laughs> you know, during the pandemic, um, I wrote two children's books with June Foster. June Foster, you hear me talk about her quite often. I'll have her on the podcast. She wrote a book called The Golden Leaf, which is getting ready to be in theaters. Um, so she reached out to me and said, Hey, do you want to write a children's book? And I was like, What? I was like, You want me to write a children's book with you? And she's like, Yeah. So we wrote two children's books, um, hoping to be published in 2022. But when you say you didn't meet the illustrator, our illustrator lives over the pond, I would say. Never met her. She's amazing. When you come to the farm, she sent me the, um, the as you said, the hand artist pages, several of the pages of our brother and I. So that's amazing. Have you framed them? Yeah, the, I got all of the original paintings and we framed them and they're in the sackcloth space in Oregon. Oh my gosh. I, yeah. and by the way, I can't They're wait masterpieces. to, you know, I love this book and I do believe that this book is for all ages. Um, you know, it's, it, it, again, those of you, I talk quite often about my farm and my farm. I have this book actually at the um, table in our living room. And it's very, I have picked this book up by the way, Bob, and I have sat there and just gone through it because, you know, there's certain things in this book that I absolutely love, you know, no matter how big, no matter how small, you know, everyone is someone we need to love all, you know, you just said that. And I opened it up at that spot and this was not planned. So by the way, You've given literally thousands of these books to away. 
you know, tell me what inspired you to do that. And by we get them guys at Comfort Cases. Um, you, you guys have seen the pictures. Yesterday we had this amazing delivery, um, thousands of these books and these beautiful blankets that we're gonna talk about. But tell me what made you decide to give the book away? Yeah, I, I was just like, you, we already have this one for one kind of model set up where you know we're providing a second blanket to homeless shelters and i wanted to get involved in this the foster care space because i found out that you know 50 to 70 percent of kids in foster care end up incarcerated or on the streets so if we're going to have a conversation about homelessness we have to have a conversation about foster care and foster care and and just children in general if we care for our kids in this country we're going to um, we're investing in the future yes. of this country and homelessness is really not an issue. It's a result of many different issues. It's a puddle that has many different streams of issues that creates homelessness. You have mental health, addiction, you know, uh, trauma, and all of these things that are creating homelessness. Uh, you can trace back to a lot of things that happened to us when we were a kid. And the family structure and the family dynamic can, if done right, and, and we can care for our children, can help prevent very long-term problems that we are now seeing in society. And so for me, I'm like, we have to have a conversation about foster care. And I knew nothing about foster care, like just like homelessness, like coming in completely blind, foster care just seems like a really big topic that is overwhelming to even try to get in and understand. And so we're taking the same approach as we did with homelessness, which is we don't have to understand homelessness in, a, in its entire entirety, nor are we trying to solve homelessness. We are trying to highlight solutions that are being created that are helping the homeless problem. That's how we're going to move the needle. So with foster care, we're looking for solutions that are being created that are actually moving the needle in the foster care space, comfort cases being one of them. So we came up with the idea for every book that I sell, I'm going to donate a second book to a child in foster care. And we launched an entire kids line of blankets through sackcloth.ashes.com. Which, by the way, this blanket is so soft. Um, guys, listen, did you hear that? For every book, and they have a whole kids line that you donate now. So for every little blanket and book purchase, we donate a blanket and book to a child in foster care. That's amazing. And that is amazing. So they can go to the website. They can purchase the combo set. No, if you buy a little blanket on our website, it comes with the free book. So if you buy with this blanket, and by the way, guys, I've said this before, my favorite blanket in the world. Um, all my kids have this. Um, you know how much I post on social media. You saw the picture of my son on a plane wrapped up in his sacks and cloth and ashes. Um, it is a great blanket. But again, Bob, you, you're giving back. And, and that's amazing. Yeah. So for these blankets, so when you're donating to homeless shelters and foster programs in general, like with homeless shelters, we donate a twin size fleece blanket. And that's because they have hundreds of people coming through the programs and shelters. They have to wash those blankets every night to prevent bed bugs. And so this blanket's a little different than the one we donate to shelters because it's a sweatshirt uh, fleece blanket. So it's a little bit thicker. And it's also, um, we wanted to create a universal product that kids all around the nation could actually use. That's a actual comfortable product that's easy to wash. And so everyone is someone is the label. It's not sackcloth and ashes. It's we wanted to promote this message primarily um, on all of the blankets we donate and, and with the book. And so that every kid, these are just a third party object. That's a delivery of the message that we want to promote to every single kid in the United States that everyone is someone, you know. Let me tell you, you know, we this is our going on our eighth year of comfort cases. We have delivered over 150,000 cases to all 50 states, D.C. and Puerto Rico. And I say this quite often. Um, you give a child a book, you literally, literally give a child a book, you will enhance our future. It, it, and that's, you know, I know as a kid who grew up in the system, a kid who was homeless, I've met all five of my kids who came from this. Reading is so important, but to read something that makes you feel good. 
you know, and then we give a blanket to every single one. I've taught, told the story. All of you have heard this. You know, my son, Grayson, um, he's going to be 14, by the way, at the end of March. Um, he was six years old and he said, Daddy, we have to put a blankie in every single case. And I was one of those people, by the way, Bob, I said to Grayson, I said, a blankie. I said, you know, these kids are not cold. And he said, no, Daddy, every time they wrap themselves up in their blankie, they know we love them. That's what your blanket does, my friend. Yeah. You know, it makes people feel they are loved. They are loved. You know, you have donated thousands of these to Comfort Cases, by the way. Um, books and blankets. We just got another shipment. So listen, everyone, you always say you want to help. And I know you are all doers. And doers make the world go round. Please go and buy one of these blankets for your kids. Talk to your kids about the ripple effect. You know, I talk about it often. The ripple effect that we teach our children, you know, how we can give in our country. And you can give by purchasing one of these books and but one of these blankets and get one of these books you know bob what's next oh man <laughs> oh, well, he's dropping that on me oh man what's next is uh what's next is uh, the biggest thing that takes up a lot of my mind space is for, i'm launching a foundation this year uh called love your city and you know through the pandemic i learned a lot and I've had a vision for about 10 years to do what I'm doing through Sackcloth, which is ultimately the mission of Sackcloth is to highlight solutions and organizations that are, are uh, making a difference in society. Blankets are just a third party object that's connecting me to these organizations. And they're also connecting me to celebrities, companies, and I'm just building bridges and, and highlighting organizations in local communities. But on a bigger level, I wanted to create a, 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 a tool uh, that anybody can use. I come across so many people that are like, I want to make a difference, but I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do. And so that was my case when I was starting Sackcloth. I called homeless shelters because I could not figure out how to even fill out a volunteer form at a homeless shelter. I struggled with that. And so fast forward, I'm launching a foundation, Love Your City, and loveyourcity.org will be a website where you're going to be able to type in your address and we're going to show you all the grassroots organizations in your community <laughs> and how you can instantly get involved by donating money and filling out a volunteer form. That website will be launched right around September, 2021. And I'm going to be dedicating about 80% of my time and the rest of my life really to building up that platform. It's what I'm most passionate about. Sackcloth was a, a detour. The kid's book has been a fun project. Love Your City is, is absolutely my heart and uh, what I want to create long term because I believe it's the most sustainable strategy long term is if we can get people taking responsibilities for their local communities uh, and we have hundreds of thousands and millions of people that are, are supporting local solutions, that's not built on hype. It's not reliant on government. It is a long term sustainable strategy that's going to move the needle on some of society's biggest issues you know you're you're right about that i i, I will tell you i i didn't know about this by the way guys so i love this i love hearing this um you know I do believe that our communities want to do better. They just don't know where to start. Mm -hmm. And having a, a foundation of this, of yours, you know, love your city. I think it's an amazing place where we need to start. And, you know, what an easy click um, of, of to go, because I, I get this quite often throughout the country is people will reach out to me and they'll say, um, you know, I want to do, but I don't know where to go, or I want to help, but I don't know what to do, you know, do. And, and, and this will be an amazing, amazing opportunity for so many people throughout our country who truly do not know what to do. And I also think that this is going to help us when it comes to vetting organizations. 100 percent. Yeah, we're going to do we're, we're taking a lot of intentional time that will be vetting the organizations that will be on the platform. I'm not scraping the Internet. Good. I'm we our team will have contacted every single organization that we have on our platform once every three months to keep accurate data and information of what these programs, shelters, um, nonprofits need, where they're at, who to contact for volunteering. Uh, all of that information will be constantly updated and we'll invest a lot of, of time and resources into making sure that that stays current because that's one of the biggest problems right now uh, is we 
have access to finding nonprofits in our community through Google and through other directories, but it's really difficult to find out what is actually needed and who to contact and, and all the minor details. Yeah. So I'm hoping to make that easier for people so that they don't have excuses to not to not move forward with it. And so you yeah. think that this will be kicking off in September? September is the goal, and um, I'm keeping it pretty open ended because the main goal right now is to make sure we launch with a a damn near perfect product. Right. Um, and so it, whether that gets pushed out or, or it could be sooner, it does I don't know yet. It's the website's being built by an incredible team of software engineers, and um, and it, I'm going to make sure that it's quality first and foremost, and then we'll decide what the exact launch date will be. Well, I'll tell you, um, Bob, I, I know you only put out quality because, again, I, I follow you. I've seen your website. I have your product. Um, I just want to say thank you. You know, this has been an amazing journey to watch this with you and and literally lucky enough to actually stand by him and so many times. And and I do hope you come back in September. I hope you come back so our listeners and, and viewers can hear about this amazing foundation. And, you know, I. I know we're going to be partners for life. I know you are passionate about foster care just as much as you're passionate about people who are experiencing homelessness. And I'm just so lucky and that that Phil introduced us. You know, you guys, you you know, I talk about my friend Phil all the time. And so, um, listen, we all can do better. We all can do better. You know, it's been amazing listening to Bob's story and uh, how he's, um, you know, really changing and moving the needle. And that's what we all need to do. And before you wrap this up, yes, thank you, man. I I uh, I, I want to make sure that I get to thank you because, you know, a lot of people are like Bob. Thank you for the work you're doing and the truth is is i'm just trying to use my platform to highlight the people and the organizations that are doing the real work and specifically the work that you're doing is so crucial and some of the most important work because you're investing in the kids and it's something that literally like the only emotional chord that i literally get struck every once in a while and get emotional about is the kids because the kids most of the time don't choose the situation and the the, the lives that they end up getting put in. And so any organizations right now that are advocating for the kids are some of the most important right now because the kids are overlooked and neglected more than ever right now in the United States. And any companies, any nonprofits, any celebrities that are stepping up and actually advocating for the kids, you have my full support. Wow. Thank you so much. Yeah. That, I'm so honored by hearing that out of your mouth. And and it is about the kids, everyone. You know, 438,000 kids are sitting in foster care right now. We know that only 54% of them will actually graduate from high school. And it breaks my heart that only 3% will actually get a four-year degree. We have done studies and seen that our prisons are filled, literally filled with people, humans, let's remember that, who were in the foster care system. And what you, you hit the nail on the head, Bob, is that these kids are in a system because of a choice that someone else made. Mm -hmm. More than 99% of these kids are in a system because of a choice someone else made. Mm -hmm. And we just got to do better, my friends. We have to do better. And teaming up, this is how it gets done. You know, the fact is, is that everybody has an opportunity. And, and I want to thank my friend Bob. I want to thank Saxcloth and Ashes for their continuing support to make sure that kids in foster care know they are not invisible. They're not disposable. Let's give them dignity and hope for their future. Everyone, this is Fostering Change. I want to thank everyone for listening. Please, you know, email me at fosteringchange at comfortcases.org if you have any questions. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for your continuing support. You know, I know we can make a difference. Please visit saxcloffandashes.com and really see how you can also give back purchase one of these beautiful, amazing blankets. You get the book for free, and this will also go to a child in foster care. I hope each and every one of you have an amazing, amazing day. And remember, each and every one of us are doers. Get out there and do. Take care.